So, I've been playing video games since I was a kid. From Final Fantasy 3 on the classic Super Nintendo, to Soulbringer on PC, to Skyrim and Dragon's Dogma. Each of these games feature a lot of magic. It's very impressive to watch and makes the player feel powerful. In the Final Fantasy series, being able to summon creatures like Behemoth or Tritok and getting that shortcut scene where they devastate your enemies is pretty amazing. Being able to watch enemies turn against one another in a pacifist run in Skyrim just felt so cool because you were in control of it and it had this big tangible impact on the world. Magic wasn't just a thing you could do yourself. Hell, it's baked directly into these settings in a lot of cases. Aspers in Final Fantasy weren't just spells. They were living, thinking people with their own lives and goals. Though, by the time you get a hold of most of them, that status gets drawn a bit more into question as what you hold now is essentially just a physical manifestation of their soul. You even play as an Asper in the game, though she's not nearly as powerful as the others, because she's, I believe, half Asper, half human. But she is practically the main character of the game. A troubled young girl whose people you get to watch be destroyed in front of her is now trying to hold the entire world together. Magic in Final Fantasy feels alive, narrative, impactful, and entirely out of your control. As I get older, I still enjoy a good story in a game, but I've gotten much more into immersive sims, simulation type games, and colony builders. I've gotten more into being able to do things in the game, instead of being in awe of what the game world says people can do. Sure, Kafka can become the god of magic somehow, but what if I did the same thing? What if... I enslaved all these small gods and embraced their power. Could I become that god of magic? If Terra did it, what would happen then? Would she become more powerful than Kefka ended up being? Now I'm fully aware that this isn't the story that Final Fantasy VI wanted to tell. And the story it does tell is actually pretty incredible. Watching the heroes lose, the world crack in half, and then you guys have to try to pull it all back together is amazing. But I have been looking for these kinds of experiences, and I ran into a snag because they don't really seem to exist. There don't appear to be many games where there's a recognized system of magic in the world that you can fully realize that consists of anything more than, you know, I cast a gun at them. And this is really a shame, because for all of the blustering about wanting to make players feel powerful, Video games don't seem to give you all that much power, really. Sure, I can cast very efficient guns of various sizes and scales, but that's not really having power. I mean, is throwing a fireball at one guy really actually that effective? Yeah. There are some games that do it. My first experience with a game that let me actually touch the systems of magic at all, probably, was The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion which sees you fighting demons spawned forth from the realm of a mad god of destruction, and following that line of prophecy to restore the true hero to his place in the world. In Oblivion, I obviously chose to play a magic user because why would I risk getting hit when I could just as easily blast a fool from the next block over with a weapon you literally can't take from me. Part of the way through the game, you get the opportunity to interact with the Mages Guild, an eccentric collection of schools dedicated to helping people learn and master the art of magic. The process of actually becoming a guild member is pretty fun and involves wandering the world trying to get a bunch of mages to sign off on the idea that you deserve to learn how to cast magic by, you know, n knowing how to cast magic. There's some dungeons to go through, fun social interactions, and if I'm remembering correctly, someone in one of those schools tries to kill you for threatening to expose a murder they committed. Honestly, it's pretty amazing, and it's just a genuinely enjoyable questline that others should try. But you join the Mages Guild, and you head on back to the Imperial City, where you'll find the Mages College, and within those venerable halls, you find it. 
a table where you can craft your own unique spells. That's right, you've been shown that these master mages are mages of various experience levels, and they all showcase strange abilities and diverse understandings of magic, and now you get to showcase who you are in this world by making your own spells, and that's, and it's just amazing. This was the first time I noticed that there was a system for magic, and I could actually do something with it. I wasn't forced to just always cast the spells that other losers came up with. No, these were entirely my own. Okay, well, mostly my own, because you still had to learn the components from others, but you could mix and match them to create your own spells, create your own unique abilities, and this led to me falling in love with Oblivion, because sure, characters like Mana Marco were these big, impressive wizards who could summon hordes of the undead or whatever, but, I mean, I could snap my fingers and make a room full of dudes turn on him. Has he ever seen that happen before? Probably not, because I made this spell right now. It really does help the feeling of me being this legendary wizard, and, I mean, by the time you've completed the Mage's Guild, you really ought to feel it, because you genuinely take on an age-old legendary wizard. Obviously, the game's not gonna fully be able to recognize its intended systems, because, of course, Mana Marco himself can permanently maintain undead, and you never quite get that ability. But at the time, this didn't even bother me. Just being able to make all these awesome spells felt amazing. For a while, that was actually pretty good. And hell, to this day, it's probably one of my favorite games out there. But over time, other games come out that let you make your own spells, and they just feel kind of hollow. Two more recent releases, Victorum and Noida both let you make your own spells, but it's once again surrounding the idea that you're just a gun, a weapon, and that's it. Both of these games can be fun if all you want to do is shoot dudes, but shooting dudes has never been that interesting to me. It's what you do in between the interesting bits. I mean, imagine if the game let you do interesting creative things, you know, you summon walls, summon minions make people more receptive to hearing you out, or hearing out others. Imagine if it made magic both part of the world and incredibly personal, like what was done in Oblivion. And I mean, what if the game did more? Imagine if a game gave you a series of spells and a series of challenges and then left you to figure out how to respond to the world. For this, we'd probably have to shift from the world of video games to the world of tabletop games, and, in specific, the World of Darkness games. World of Darkness is a contemporary horror tabletop RPG that sees the player in a world filled with monsters, vampires, fae, werewolves, and most importantly in this discussion, sorcerers, mages. The game's most recent addition that I got to play, at least, is Chronicles of Darkness, and it has the most in-depth magic casting system I can think of, though on the surface it might look rather simple. On that surface level, both to the player and a new mage, it looks and potentially feels like you just select some spells. If you have enough levels, you can cast them if you've got the mana, of course. And seclusion this might be true, but the world attempts to confound this simple structure, and an experienced mage can turn it into so much more. You see, the game has all sorts of factors for casting, including disbelief, which is generated by non-magical humans nearby, which can cause a spell to fail, paradox, which is the world's attempt to keep magic out because magic ought not exist. Each spell can be modified with a different number of factors, such as selecting multiple targets or an area of effect, and learning different kinds of magic allows you to affect your spells in different ways, including space magic, allowing you to cast spells on people who are nowhere near you, time magic, allowing you to cast spells now and use them later, and particularly advanced mages can take multiple spells and put them together. All of these and then there are also Yantra, which are special tools, rituals, times, places, and more. 
that can make it easier to cast spells. What this does is it turns the act of casting a simple spell into a story. Instead of eating a book to learn the spells like in Skyrim, you now take time out of character and in character to learn about various factors of your character, of the threats they face, and of course of your spellcasting capability. All of this in order to weave the perfect spell and make sure that it's ready for exactly the moment you need it. Now, am I saying that all games need to just copy Mage the Awakening in its depth and complexity? Yes. I mean, it's a great game, and it'd be incredibly simple, I'm sure. No. No, of course not. That would be obnoxious. But it is strange that there are so few games that look at magic as a way to tell a story instead of a way to give your character a very special gun that can't be taken from them. And ultimately, I think that might be the problem we have, is that we look at violence as power, but power and violence are not often connected. Sure, one of the ways to shore up your power is to use violence, but if you never follow up on that violence, then all you've done is create violence. You haven't created power at all. You haven't become in control of anything, except for perhaps a few more corpses. So what would I do in my own video game to make sure that magic feels more meaningful? Well, I think a lot of it would have to focus on the use of story. There would have to be events in the game that allow players to use any form of magic to have an impact. One of the major problems in Skyrim is that you can train the Restoration School of Magic, but it does nothing. You barely ever heal yourself with Restoration Magic because the game is just so non-threatening and you never heal anybody else. Besides that, I think spellcrafting is an important portion of magic. Learning different factors and how to use them, mix them together, and so on. I think that this makes magic feel incredibly personal, and it makes your character feel so much cooler. But outside of that, you should also be able to build things which are permanent. In my ideal game, which would probably be more like a colony builder, Magic would not just serve as a way to kill the bad guy, but as well as a way to manipulate relations, or perhaps build up infrastructure over time. Imagine summoning workers or animating tools and machines in order to do the work for you. Imagine mind-controlling other nations so that they form alliances with you. Imagine performing very long rituals to rend open the gates of oblivion on your own. Oh, and one of the most important things in my mind is that if you can do it, your opponents can do it. And if your opponents can do it, so can you. Sure, it should take time for powerful rituals and so on, but anything that a mage can do, any other mage should be able to replicate. Oh my god, wait, did they have their own summoner? Absolute bastards. This will just help your magic feel more real, and there should be people who recognize the downstream consequences of it. If there was anyone in the world who could just heal wounds without using resources, there would definitely be downstream effects of this on entire economies and entire societal structures, and I feel like a game should probably recognize this. I want to be clear once again, not every game has to do this, but I feel like most games that have magic should at least take some suggestions from this. Make sure that the characters in your game recognize that magic is real and that the game world itself recognizes that magic. You know, how much wood do you need to buy for your forge if you can cast fire from your hands? Hey there everyone, so I hope you enjoyed this little chat on magic in video games and I guess to a degree like how tabletop role-playing games can help us out. 
I'm, I'm trying to get better at this whole talking about this sort of thing. I, I want to do it more. I want to talk more about how we can look at magic in video games differently and how maybe uh, put out some ideas about things developers could do to make their magic games a bit more interesting. If you're interested in chatting about magic in video games, you should join us over on the Discord, which there's a link to in the description. As well, I try to stream three days a week over on Twitch, where I play games like Skyrim, Shadow of War, Total War Warhammer, Minecraft, and RimWorld. Just playing all sorts of different games with interesting, unique takes on magic. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely check that out. And you can also find me at Twitter and Facebook. In the There are links in the description. But that's going to be it for now. In the meantime, just remember, nobody cares. Thank you very much and good night. We got an assassination request. I want to try this. Oh no! I didn't send them with any fuel. Nothing, we're just sitting here playing chess. It's fine. Can we make beds? <laughs> make ourselves a new home here in the big city. Every day wondering about the family we've left, how they're doing, if they miss us at all. They're gonna be like, why are there two homeless people sleeping in the back of our rec center?